What's up, everybody? How you doing? Welcome back to another episode of Living Life Intently. This is a Live Life Intense podcast. I'm your host, Lee Frazier, and I'm joined each and every week with a good buddy of mine. I almost forgot Canary's name. Wow. Jonathan Canary, that is if I don't kill him on any of the next trips that I'm going to take him on. But, you know, for now, he's joining us for these podcasts. Uh, Two things before we jump in. Today, March 31st, Thursday, March 31st, if you're listening to this, the day that we release this podcast, this is the last day for our preseason glamping sale. So if you want to come down to Marguerite, uh, stay in the campground in one of our glamping tents. Um, They sleep four people, by the way, queen bed, two single cots, all the cookware. Just saying, um, you can save 10% in your entire booking, but today is the last day of that sale. In June, we're running a whole special for the whole month of June. Book any two, uh, book two nights at any campsite and get your third for free, but it's got to be on that same booking. So you just select three, three nights and it discounts your whole booking by one night. Uh, so if you're coming down for the hike Nova Scotia summit in early June, you're coming down to go fishing, get an early jump on the summer season. This is your chance to save some bucks and, uh, you know, we'll get to hang out and we'll get to have fun and have morning coffee watching the sun come over the mountain. Maybe I'll go for a couple beers watching the sun go back over the mountain on the other side of the valley, obviously. But uh, yeah, anyways, those are the two deals. So without further ado, this is the new episode of Living Life Intently. And this one was a fun one. Man, oh man, this one was fun. Uh, we had a blast doing it. We were in Sydney a couple of weeks ago when we recorded the last podcast and jumped over from recording uh, with Denis and went straight to Kev T's. Uh, Kevin Taylor is the owner or one of the owners of Island Sauce Company, which is a Cape Breton-based barbecue sauce and condiment company. Um, yeah, anyways, we're just going to jump right into it, man. This was a blast. Uh, we did a couple events with him last year. And uh, yeah, so anyways, without further ado, Kev T. Sauce Man, living life intently. See you next week. Peace. And we're back. <laughs> and we're back. We're we are we are here. We are here. We're here. Oh shit, my mic stand fell off. Uh we're here with the sauce man. We're in Sydney. Sauce man. What's going on? <laughs> What's up, boys? Uh, I love that nickname, the Sauce Man. It, you you texted me the other day. Uh, you go, hey, what's up? It's Kev, the Sauce Man. Uh, that's how I that's how I envisioned you saying it. Yeah, I, that's pretty much how I said it in my mind too. <laughs> you know what? Before we go any further, I, I don't know if like uh, any of the listeners you have are hard like hardcore old school wrestling fans. Yeah, but uh, Scott Hall slash Razor Ramon passed away recently. Yeah, yep. So I got to do one thing. Hey, yo, carry on, boys. Sure. <laughs> <laughs> All right, uh, whatever, man. So the boys don't watch '90s wrestling. I, guess. I have never watched. Uh, yeah, well, I, I mean, I watched wrestling when I was a kid. Yeah, so did I. Yeah. But I wasn't like I know uh, Razor Ramon was a. Uh, I, I like Razor Ramon. I was more like Jake the Snake. Um, I got Sid Vicious's head on my keychain. Wow! Oh, shit! Yeah! Wow! Right? We're gonna we're gonna. Uh, he looks, that after the- he looks nervous, though. Right? <laughs> Where did you like, get that? That's awesome. I found it in a, in a puddle. And you know what? It's <laughs> How yeah, dare you? I just looked down, and there was like a little face staring at me out of this puddle. And it's like from one of the old wrestling figurines right. that have the that had the elastic joints. 100%. So there's this little loop in it. And I was like, oh, I'm going to put that on my beat. So for the listeners, he has a Psycho Sid slash Sid Vicious head on his keychain, which is one of the coolest things I've seen in the last couple of weeks, at least. <laughs> You're like the only person that, I mean, I, obviously I said his name, but I, I would probably, I could probably be like, look, and you'd be like, that's Sid Vicious. A hundred percent. You know yeah. what? He was uh, like a Hall of Fame softball player too. Lob ball. Really? Just so you know. I, you know. Whoa. Yeah. Hey, all the information here. <laughs> oh, wow. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I bet you you're noses. great. Yeah. <laughs> you're great at trivia. Yeah. yeah, some stuff. Yeah. Yeah. I used to. Uh, I, at one point, I dressed up as uh, Ultimate Warrior for Halloween. Yes. And uh, I had. Uh, I went to. It's when American Peril was still in Halifax. So I went in and I bought the neon, uh, the neon tight shorts, like women's shorts. And then I bought like uh, I think what what's what are they called the straps that. They were like the like a crop top. Is it crop? But it was like just the band, the, the spandex band that went across their breasts. <laughs> yeah. okay. And so I bought a bunch of those because they'd fit around my legs. So I put like built knee pads on my legs with neon. And then I went to um, 
Uh, it's the only time I did like a big Halloween costume, right? So I ended up going to Fabricville and finding uh, Lycra, but neon Lycra. And so I cut strips and I had tassels all over my arms. Oh, that's the way. And happen. I had uh, a, a blonde mullet wig. And then I had on these, uh, I had want, I was telling you about these shoes earlier when we were paddling, <laughs> these diesel shoes, right? Yeah. And I, I went and bought uh, at Duggars in Halifax. They had like diesel sneakers or high tops, but they were like bright neon, like ridiculous, like they look like moon boots. And so that's what I wore. And I wore them out. And I had a, a wrestling belt and I put my wallet because I had no pants, no, 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 like pockets, right? right. So we we're at a concert, a Halloween party at the Canard Center. And so I had my wallet stuffed in the, between my waist and the belt. And I was, you know, just on another planet. On another like, level. You know, You're the warrior. Just, and, <laughs> and so I, I get to, uh, we go out afterwards and we go to all these after parties. And then I realize I don't have my wallet. So all my, I had about $300 in cash, no wallet. Because I was an idiot, and I put it in yeah. not even in the in the spandex of the shorts. I just, just had behind it in, the belt. Yeah, behind yeah. the belt. I was like, yeah, it's tight enough. It's you get it, ever get it back? Yeah, yeah, no less the money. Yeah, yeah. yeah. It was well, re- of course. Listen, if you lose a wallet with money in it, yeah, it's gone. The money's sure. there. Yeah, just oh, give me the wallet. Exactly. I'll right? tell you. I'll tell you. No this. hard feelings. Yeah. Well, I'll tell you this story. Right. So I was going to uh, there was uh, when we were, I used to do events and uh, run club nights and stuff. So the annual party kind of like networking thing was in Miami. It's called Miami music week for electronic music. So we're heading to Miami and I was DJing and running shows in Andy Ganesh. So I had, I, that day I'd just gone to the bank. I got two grand us cash, all hundred dollar bills. So like 20 grand Canadians, what you're saying? Yeah, pretty yeah. much. Yeah. Okay. And, uh, I, you know, we went and DJ the club. Um, I had the money in my inside pocket, my leather jacket. The next morning, I wake up, I go to reach in my jacket pocket, no money. I'm like, fuck. And uh, I call the bar. The bar's like, yeah, nobody turned in $2,000 a US. And uh, I was on my way to Halifax. And the, one of the guys that I had running and managing the nights for me, he was. I told him, and he's like, oh, let me let, let me sort this out. I'll find out who at St. of X got that money. <laughs> No word of lie. I was in Glasgow. Calls me and he goes, "Found your money." He goes, "I was at a party as friends of mine. It's a brother of a friend of his who was like, boys, you won't believe what I found last night.'" And Justin's like, he, "He's like, dude, I literally jumped over the table and grabbed it out of his hands." And he said, "That's Lee's." And he called me and I was like, "Give him a hundred bucks." <laughs> yeah. so, I know, for sure. Yeah. That's so pretty, I drove yeah. finder's fee. I good drove, deal. Yeah. yeah. That was better than the time I took traveler's checks. I thought I was being really good and went to Miami with five, traveler's checks. And found out nobody cashes traveler's checks yeah. anymore. It's not 1990. It's, 90, it's 1970. <laughs> yeah. So, Kevin. Uh, Hold on. Wait, before we get started here, one more thing. Okay. Is there, like, do we have photos of you in the warrior costume? Yep. yep. All right. So, we have to, like, make we're sure. We're going to have to dig those up. We're going to have to post this on social media. Yeah. yeah gotta, all right. Like, this has got to happen. Yeah. It's the, cra- my, the crowd is expecting it now. It's right? on his legacy <laughs> Facebook page. <laughs> oh, it is. It is. Yeah, yeah. There's, like, 800 of those pictures. All right. So, that is the uh, wrestling segment of the podcast. <laughs> of the way. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> okay. So, uh, yeah. Tell us who you are. Tell us about yourself. Tell us what you got on the go. Uh, all right, so my name is Kevin Taylor. You can call me Kev T. That's what uh, the boys called me and the girls, the friends. Right. Uh, the sauce boss, the sauce man. Uh, <laughs> yes. Right? Lots of, uh, you know, the sauce boss, the sauce man, the sauce father. Ah. Uh, right? Uh, anyways, I'm the owner, uh, the majority owner of Violent Sauce Company located here in Sydney, Cape Breton. Yep. Uh, my partner's Nathan Susan. Uh, he's the uh, company chef, mm-hmm. and he's also... The sexiest sauce man on the planet. He he trumps me. Like he he's the he's the front man. I'm just the amazing chef. Uh, oh, amazing chef. Uh, like Nathan's brilliant. He's a genius. He's the brains behind the the operation in terms of the the the, the taste of the sauce, the products uh, themselves. Mm-hmm. And uh, yeah, we're we're the sauce and food condiment company here in Cape Breton. We're making it happen. Yep. Uh, we're we're growing. We're loving what we're doing, and uh, we're having a blast. Yeah. Cool. Yeah. So. Um... Yeah, tell us. So you guys have done an event together or some events together? Uh, yeah, me and Lee. Yeah. yeah, yeah. We hooked up last summer for uh, a little shindig and margarita. That was fun. We uh, we had some food and some music at Lee's place. Uh, just a little small event because we mm-hmm. were still in the uh, the weird times that we're we're hopefully moving past now. Uh, I still remember the, the the dish we served up. We had a little pulled pork sandwiches with some coleslaw, some street corn, and some. Uh, Taters with cheese sauce. That's yeah, yeah. yeah. The, the cheese sauce was the first time I saw it was like crushed up like Cheetos, right? 
Oh uh, well, that was we, yeah. We do that. Yeah, yeah we I'm do that. Pretty sure we had yeah we had cheese sauce and we like do that as well. Yeah. That's, well, uh, I mean, I, I thought that's what. Uh, anyway, some in some way in the conversation that got put in there that it was like Cheetos, and I'm like, that is genius. Yeah. Well, you know what we do actually when we make our mac and cheese, like for yeah. our caterings and stuff like that. Instead of breadcrumbs for like your yeah. crust, crusting on your top of your mac and cheese, we use crushed jalapeno and cheddar cheetos so just a little cool. twi- yeah, oh, yeah gets the crowd going yeah, yeah I, 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 it. i'm really excited when we they had they came out with cheetos uh i tried it right full disclosure i was like after you guys left i went down and i got a bag of cheetos and i smashed the shit out of them it was not oh, yeah. the same thing uh and put it in like craft dinner or whatever and then i found out that you could get <laughs> the cheetos craft dinner yeah not good not not that good. in my opinion i tried all of them i bought a box of each like not a box but uh, like a fucking uh, flat of each. Right. I just went good. I was like told Martin at the co-op who orders the food. I go, can Costco. You, can you get them? And he goes, oh, I can get them in. I was like, okay, well, I'll take a whole flat, flat <laughs> 24 <of> each flavor. <laughs> like all three flavors. Give me up. Fl- okay, cool. Next week, had them all in. Tried them. It's like, eh, not yeah. as good as what, you know, what you yeah. guys did. Yeah. You know, oh, well, that's just like, that's boxed. Yeah. You know, it's garbage. It, it has its place though. I'm, I'm a fan. Right. Yeah, it but has its, its place. Like, yeah, right. it has its place. Uh, which uh, there's something really important. What now that we're on the topic of the box cheese, yeah, uh, or macaroni and cheese, you have to double cheese bag or at least uh, like one and a half cheese bag your box macaroni. So when you buy a box of like Kraft Dinner, let's say you have to buy like two boxes and then double cheese bag. So when you're double cheese bagging, that's when you get the best box macaroni and cheese. That's true. You could do like three boxes, so do two, like one and a half bags of cheese in each box. Yeah, that's really that's the secret for the best box macaroni and cheese. Double cheese bagging. You heard it here first. <laughs> <laughs> I think that's like the. You, I mean, you you guys should be getting into that. That's that. that is it? The secret leak you're going to do today? Let's well, talk- actually, <laughs> you know, it's funny. It's crazy because I didn't ever, I never even told you guys this. So we have a new product coming out uh, this spring, and uh, it's uh, a cheesy faux cheesy seasoning. So it's a uh, it's our play on a on a on a powdered cheese uh, mix to get the crowd going. It's, oh. oh man, cheesy faux cheesy! It's going to get the crowd going this summer. <laughs> <laughs> right? Wicked. Yeah, so that'll be our new product. So yeah, I, I Tell, never even told you that. Well, keep, you mean, keep me up perfect. So there we go. <laughs> Tell us uh, about some of the products, um, what goes into making them, what went into, like, what inspired some of them. Yeah, sure. Yeah, no problem. So, like, we, we had this idea for the business um, many moons ago now. It took a long time to get it up and going. Um, but... The whole idea was like you look at like Brenton Brewery, the craft beer market. Then you look at like Nova Scotia Beer Company and the liquor market, maybe East Coast Lifestyle Mm -hmm. and the clothing market. And we kind of want to replicate that kind of business model in the sauce and food condiment uh, world or the food world. Mm -hmm. Um, So we we got to it. And uh, Nathan and myself, we collaborated making the product. So uh, our first three were like three barbecue sauces. Mm -hmm. So we got the Cape Smoky Barbecue. It's got a Cape Breton base, but a Smoky Mountain taste. Oh, <laughs> yeah. I love that. I know, right? how, how many times have you said that? Oh, it's, I say it in my sleep. I wake the wife up and she's like, I don't care about your barbecue sauce taglines. <laughs> right? <laughs> but yeah, and then we got the Highlander Honey Barbecue. It's got a honey flavor, but a saucy behavior. Oh. Yeah. Oh, yeah. And the Spicy Chipotle Barbecue. It's uh, got a Chipotle bite, but it's spiced just right, boys. You know that. That's right. Yeah, yeah. So um, yeah, that's our three barbecue <laughs> sauces. And then we got the seasonings. We got the Love Rub. You know, you got you to gotta share the love, spread the rub, you know, <laughs> and uh, the jalapeno and garlic seasoning, right? It's got a, a jalapeno heat, but it's got a garlic treat as well, boys. Ooh. So, yeah. Yeah. So, those are our products, and we're and we're crushing it here uh, in Cape Breton and just uh, getting everybody... Uh, yeah, like, uh, it seems to be going pretty well. Everybody I know has it in their refrigerator, which is like... Thank, yeah. You know what I mean? Well, like, not everybody drinks the same beer, has the... You know what I mean? But it's pretty cool to see local products in people's kitchens yeah yeah I th- well i think so. everybody here is like very hot to very support not hot but very supportive of when something comes from cape breton and it's from here and it's birthed here and grown here mm-hmm. yeah um yeah i think that 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 that's traditionally that's what i've seen like people like to get behind something that's local yeah and you know what like we saw like a kind of a hole in the market as well because when you looked at the sauce and food condiment like what was you know on the shelves at our supermarkets not only was there nothing local not even just like you know, Cape Breton, but not even Nova Scotia, Maritimes, and even Canada. Yeah. And besides that, all the the companies and the sauces, 
they weren't doing anything like from a social media standpoint. They weren't like investing in our communities. They weren't like doing anything cool, uh, reaching yeah. out to the customers. They were just really like, excuse me, uh, like very stagnant. They were they were like they had a market share and they just kind of stopped. They like took advantage of it. Like they they just yep. didn't care about like you know investing in, in into the uh, the people and the communities. So we saw that uh, and uh, really just wanted to take advantage of just being a part of the community giving back uh, mm-hmm. having some fun and so not only are the products like tasty and delicious but people see that we're, we really care we're in the community we're yep. trying right and so even if they don't like the sauce they, which they'd be crazy not to uh they still they still <laughs> kind of support us right they give it to a friend for christmas or whatever it may be so yeah totally yeah big christmas seller eh? you guys did a shop at the mall yeah yeah i was lucky to um you know have a little pop-up uh, store at the, at the mayflower mall and uh yeah we crushed it really lucky uh like in our first year in business really uh, i was really proud that we we were able to kind of um navigate through the pandemic because it took me so many years to get this off the ground yeah and mm-hmm. then literally like after like two three years of struggling uh yeah. you know people like would laugh at me like oh kev i'll be eating uh, because like oh he's out his bungalow you know cooking barbecue sauce like a lunatic right and like, <laughs> no money you know like co- coming down boy he's gotta try this sauce. like oh yeah right, all right on kev yeah he's yeah. crazy you know right? and then eventually we finally put it all together finally getting ready to business almost like the two of the day when we like we got our loans ready to launch right they were like it was like pandemic covid it was like they were like oh kefty's finally getting it on the go no we're not gonna let him <laughs> and the, the pandemic got thrown at us so yeah we were really happy to um navigate through that and then we got the store at the mall and like within our first year we had a store at the mayflower mall our local mall we were in sobeys uh you know expanded into the mainland and uh, had our own takeout food shop so we were really happy with uh all those opportunities that popped up yeah the support we got from the community and uh and now uh we're sitting around having podcasts with the boys who live life in tents. <laughs> I, uh, I love the social media stuff with Susan cooking. Oh, and Nate's, yeah, well, yeah, he's good, man. Yeah. And then Logan does a great job of uh, doing the work for us, actually. Yeah, he's, he's uh, great, too. He, he was going to try to make it here today, but he, he got caught up. He's, he's shooting some stuff. So he's starting full-time with us uh, basically next week. So uh, the content that we're going to be we're gonna be flowing out over, uh, from now on is going to be, we're going to, we got a lot of fun things uh, up our sleeve, right? So, uh, you know, part of the, 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 the social media stuff, part of the company is like, we're not selling like vacuum cleaners here, right? Like we're selling sauce food so we can have some fun with it right like you know you can absolutely right yeah yeah so it's uh we're we're looking fun to have you know (laughs) doing a little gardening with the love rub you know like smacking your buddy with some barbecue sauce when he's sleeping you know you have a little fun with it right outside of food stuff so fucking antiquing like yeah that's right (laughs) antiquing with barbecue sauce that's that's well i was thinking about that today like honestly oh my god a handful of barbecue sauce as someone sleep do it to your dad just like bam margera did to his right right you know yeah, or maybe we, we can like mix some flour and barbecue sauce and like antique oh, with the barbecue with the, on one side and slap with the barbecue sauce. In you the know, other. in old school when they do the KY jelly wrestling, you got to do that. <laughs> 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 you gotta you gotta rig up a wrestling match. Yeah, yeah, yeah. that's not. Yeah, we can you can have a lot of fun with it, right? So <laughs> um, I'm open to suggestions. <laughs> oh. <laughs> Hit, us, that, up, hit us up on social media. When you, uh, so you said it took a couple of years to get off the ground. So what went into those two years of getting off the ground? And did you, like, were you working a side gig or did you just kind of like, were you work? So were you working a side job and then on the weekends just doing nothing but cook for sauce, so- cook for sauce, cooking sauce, cook yeah. for sauce, English. <laughs> yes, please. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah, that's a great question. And like, thanks for asking actually, because, uh, like to, to get this off the ground, like I'm like, I don't wish what I had to go through upon anybody. Cause it was like, I have to give credit to like my family for supporting, uh, me and, and just like, you have to be a sick, sick person to, to <laughs> like, just to endure what I had to do. And like, just keep, I had a dream and I believed in it Yeah, and everything that I, that I said to people, um, during those early days and those early times when I got all the eye rolls and the laughs, like mm-hmm. everything I said, it's happening now. Like I, I believed it. But to answer your question a little th- more thoroughly, it was so hard because the infrastructure is not here in Cape Breton, and it wasn't even here in Nova Scotia to really uh, to do this, uh, like in terms of facilities, yeah. bottles, you know, packaging, all that kind of stuff, yeah. right? And then um, getting loans and funding for something that no one believes in or doesn't think you can do. 
it was extremely hard as well. Yeah. So I had to overcome like pretty much every challenge in, uh, in, in the book. And like, you know, for two or three years, we, we made a few, we actually launched the, the business and we had a few bottles going and then a whole bunch of stuff fell through. And I was like literally making money, like working as a bartender, living in my co- like cottage, eating like you know tuna fish and raw potatoes like cook a barbecue sauce like <laughs> was, right like it was it was Where's a, that flavor at? Uh, yeah hey it's coming right <laughs> tuna fish and raw potato barbecue sauce that's <laughs> limited edition right um but yeah man it was a struggle it was and like i'll have to i have to you have to just like really believe in something and i i just really just took it you know where the sun don't shine there for a long time and eventually things turned around i'm really lucky a guy named paul hill um uh he runs a company called hills jamaican jerk he had a similar dream to what i did he has a sauce uh, in, uh business as well and he was having trouble getting it off the ground up in halifax uh due to the same reasons Excuse me. and he actually um put up his own money and built a little facility a yep. manufacturing facility in, mm-hmm. in halifax and once that happened I kind of like uh, you know coincided with me being uh, starting to get the momentum going with some money and, and all that kind of stuff. So he works. Uh, he's our co-packer. He he's our main does all the manufacturing up in the mainland. Yeah. And he's just uh he's the um he's the real sauce father actually. He's without him uh, he he there's no there's no food manufacturing really in the province. Yeah. Other than on a, on, a, on a larger scale. Yeah. So he does like there's lots of other products that uh, you would see in the shelves the local products you would see in the shelves of uh, like your your Sobeys or your superstore that he manufactures at his facility. So uh, shout out to Paul Hill. Uh, he's the real sauce father. Uh, you know, Nova Scotia legend. Uh, absolutely. Cool. Yeah. Yeah. Thank God for that, man. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I mean, or I'd it, still be sleeping in my bungalow eating, you know, cat food probably. At I, know. Point. <laughs> I know it really, it, it's like, um, yeah, it takes <clears throat> quite a well, bit. Lee, you would know. I mean, you probably went through a ton of struggle. Like, uh, yeah. So, I mean, we, what we do is not like what we do with like live life intense now is nothing like I had no plan. Right. So that's the difference. It was like you had a, a, a goal and a plan. I had no clue what I was doing. I was like working. So uh, I worked as like um, I worked offshore diving. So I had <clears throat> I had the upper hand where I worked in a very, you know, high income position, uh, well, you know, a very risky job. So right. I worked offshore forever. So uh, but it, I had a lot of failed businesses through my 20s. So all through my t- I had a clothing store in Halifax. I was living in a closet uh, with a hot plate and I ate once a day. I lost 40 pounds in like the first six months around that business because I had no money to pay. I had money. I had to put all my money into the business to pay the rent for the venue the, or the, the our shop. And then I DJed two nights on the weekends to get extra money so I could buy food. And then I would buy frozen food. I'd buy canned food. I'd make like a fucking... Uh, stir fry on a hot plate and I'd eat it once a day because that's all I had money for. And so I ran that and then I got out of it and went back to offshore and then I was running events, you know, that sort of stuff. And I would get money and and because I wanted to do, I DJed a lot and I wanted to do events. And then when I moved home to do Live Life Intense, it was really planned. It was just like I took a year off I, or I, I bought a house and I wanted to take a year off to do work. We had a recession. I had some money. There's no plan. It was just like, I'm just going to do it. I put my own money into it. And then it kind of like sparked it was, took a life of its own. Almost. It's like, oh, well, there's an interest here. And it's something that I grew up doing. And I like being outside. But at the time, because I had no plan, I had to just invest my own money. And really up until like last year, I had never taken a dime out of the business. I just bankrolled myself and lived off of savings. And uh, up until two years ago, I was still diving in the wintertime. So I'd go away for like three or four months, make some revenue so I could live for the year. And then I'd run the business. So... We never went for financing. We never went to a co. We never went to anything. It was more or less like, let's put up my own money. Let's build a business that could stand on its own two feet, that could pay employees and could pay people. And it makes sense. And then we can utilize all those funding sources if we want Mm. to then grow the business. So yeah, I just threw money at it. Like literally I threw like hundreds of thousands of dollars at it for like three years. And then I just knew that it would happen. It would work. And then it would start paying dividends. So now I'm, no, I'm, this is to this week is the first week I'm on payroll for sure. Yeah, boy. With all I've never payroll little, relief. Little known fact. Little known fact. People think you know it's like, the, but that's 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 that was reality. It's like something I wanted to do, and I th- I knew that 
in my gut, I knew that there was longevity in that industry. So I just kept reinvesting any money that would ever go through Live Life Intensive just always got reinvested into buying assets or buying property or uh, new experiences or whatever. So, uh, yeah, so that's now, now I'm actually a paid employee of Live Life Intensive. That's awesome. After and like five years, you know what? Years. It's a great story. Like, he, you should tell your story as much as possible because, uh, and I, I like to t- try to tell mine a little bit as well because it's good for like the next generation of, uh, you know, young people here in Cape Breton, whether it's rural Cape Breton, whether it's here in Sydney or, or, or whatever it may be, because there, there wasn't always a, a time where, you know, people thought you could do the stuff. The stuff was impossible to do here yeah. on your own. Right. Like, yeah. uh, and, uh, when they see a couple idiots like me and you, uh, <laughs> a, able to do it, right. They're like, if I, these guys can do it. Well, anyway, I can do it. You know, that's right. Right. Uh, uh, cause uh, we're certainly idiots and we're nothing special. I don't, I, I can speak for myself anyways. Uh, uh, <laughs> fucking call me. An I, idiot. I, yeah. I don't, I don't want to put words in your mouth. He, but, you trust know, me. He's an idiot. Yeah. Right. Right. <laughs> I forgot everything yeah. today. Yeah. Um, and, and like to f- furthermore about your story, uh, it's similar to with the sauce. Like you enjoyed it. Uh, you, it was your yeah. lifestyle. Yeah, yeah. You lived it. Like you, like I said, you weren't selling uh, vacuum cleaners. Like it was something you you like somewhat you enjoyed. I'm, I'm assuming is that you're still going on the hikes. You're still doing that stuff. So it was something that like you like at least uh, in part that you enjoyed as more, more of as a lifestyle. Uh, I, I would assume. Yeah. Well, this I grew up like all the stuff we're doing now is stuff I grew up doing. So right. and it was never in. I never thought it could be an actual, like I never thought about it as a business growing up because all I did, I used to do this all for free. I used to host people. I used to take people from Halifax. I'm like, oh, you never been to Cape Breton? Let's go. And I'd take crews of like 10, 15, 20 people down here. We'd crash my parents' place um, and then they'd go out and hike things. Or if I had somebody that wanted to do backcountry stuff, we would just take them on backcountry hikes. You know, that sort of stuff. But I, I it was like, well, you know, when we d- we did it, we we started when I say we, it's my brother and I, and and we started this kind of like idea of what it was going to be, uh, and it's evolved every year since. So, I mean, some people approach it like we've got to have like a solid idea. We've got to have like you know you got to have a business plan. I've never done a business plan in my life. Um, uh, well, sorry, I have done it last year be- mm. just because I needed to for right. uh, financing purposes, but I've never actually sat down and had an idea and then worked a business plan right i just said well this is what i want to do i'm going to do it and figure out how to do it yeah well that's that's just it and uh, like even with uh, us it's kind of the same thing so two years ago island sauce company got like fully launched with their products you know in sobeys mm-hmm. but there was three years before that where we we're just doing a really small scale work and making mistakes um so like it kind of built organically where we didn't just have a business plan uh, day one, get like hundreds of thousands of dollars in financing. And then it was more of like, you know, you, you, you put your own money in, you build it, you grow it. You can, the mistakes you make are on a smaller scale. So that, you know, three, five, seven years down the line, when you make it, those mistakes are, are, you don't make, you don't make as many of them. So when you make them early on, yeah, they don't cost you, you know, a ton of money, you know what I mean? Or whatever, like you kind of learn as you go. And, yeah. uh, you know, we, we kind of, kind of follow the same path in, uh, in that respect. Uh, but hold on a second, boys. <laughs> All right, hit All us. Right. Hey, well, uh, I'm hijacking the podcast here for Please for do. a few minutes because uh, I know a lot of our followers are going to listen to this podcast. I'm going to promote it. Uh, we have a really uh, pretty good following. I uh, love everyone. Uh, you know, uh, <laughs> bragging now. Hey, yeah, uh, listen, the sauce, <laughs> right? Spa. It tickles. It tickles the fancy of the people. You know, <laughs> the people uh, love the right? sauce. It's the people love Nate, really, uh, and uh, you know, they just. I think you got some people on your side. Uh, yeah, I got a few. Yes. But anyway, so like, there's. <laughs> There, we're going to have like some people from Island Sauce Company that are going to listen to this podcast. Yeah. And so I, I want that like to kind of highlight like what Live Life Inten- Intense is. For those people who like love Cape Breton or, or, or are big advocates uh, for Cape Breton or are from here or whatever it may be, you got to check out Live Life Intense. They have a great YouTube channel. They have a great business out in Marguerite. Uh, just a really cool like uh, the videos they have. This Obviously, this podcast, uh, the great facilities and... Uh, uh, land you have out Marguerite. Uh, listen, check out Live Life Intense. Follow them on Instagram. Check their YouTube. It's it's awesome what Lee's doing. He's showcasing Cape Breton, all the beautiful things uh, here. What you guys are doing with your hikes and adventures, like mm-hmm. Live Life Intense as a whole, as a brand, and what you guys are doing is fucking awesome. 
All right. And it's really highlighting Cape Breton. If you want to learn more about Cape Breton, see Cape Breton, uh, feel the vibe, the real heart of Cape Breton, you got to follow Live Life Intense. You got to check out their shit. Uh, uh, the, the boys, the, no. I love honestly, this plug. Honestly, the, the boys are. I can't do it even I'm better. Like than really this. proud of what you guys are doing. Uh, it's just because, like, Cape Breton's at my heart. I, I actually, I think I told you guys, uh, I, I'm, my family's from Marguerite. Yeah, yeah, uh, and yeah, yeah. I grew up, uh, I grew up out, the, out there, and I used uh, to smash those go karts all the time. Yeah, yeah. How dare you? <laughs> oh, I knew that. Yeah. Hey, Dad, hey, go karts. Go karts. Yeah, that's that. I did yeah. know that. I that was uh, that. Yeah. the sauce man, and it was a sauce boy back then, and uh, he I, <laughs> right, <laughs> just a wee sauce. Yeah, so like my family owned uh, uh, the lakes in Lake Ola, yeah, and uh, we were uh, seasonals in uh, Dunvegan. Um, at you clouds. didn't even shop at your own business. Jesus. Oh, we did, we did. I, I mostly like if I <laughs> stayed there, I'd be scraping paint uh, every day. You know what I mean? Uh, fixing it, the go karts. Yeah, I fixing, ran yeah, through yeah, the tires. Right, yeah. 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 It, it, did you ever like, listen? I'll tell you a little story. It's uh, it's uh, NSFW. Not really, but uh, <laughs> in a bathrooms of like a campground. Yeah. Um. There's when the paint when you have to scrape the paint off the bottom of the bathroom floors. It's soaked with like two to three years of piss, yeah. right? So it's like it's not a fun. Like when I was working for my uncle, and the first job I was like, oh, I guess you could, you know, you don't mind scraping the paint in the bathroom floors. You're like, oh no, and then he was setting me up, right? Classic uncle move, you know what I mean? Yeah. And, uh, so character yeah. builder, they yeah, call those. character builder. That's right. So you know, I love Marguerite, love Cape Breton, and uh, it's just like uh, just the people that are Island Sauce Company uh, followers that are listening to this podcast. Uh, and everyone else uh, that may be listening, Live Life Intense is doing a great thing. It's really showcasing Cape Breton. Uh, like, thank you for that. It's, it's, it's almost like a, you're doing a civic duty as well as running a business, <laughs> in my opinion. You no, know, really. <laughs> and like, you're writing blogs now, John, and like, yeah. it's stuff like this is important, man. Like, this, what you guys are doing is excellent stuff. Excellent stuff. And uh, I'm really, well, really happy we got to, like, you know, uh, Got like for little, some friends and get some action. Well, I, you know what? Right. You're, t- you're talking about sauce stuff. I mean, I, I th- think we should just do a you know a collab hot sauce. I mean, you're not in the hot sauce game yet. No, no, so actually, I think no, we should, not. you know, yeah. the, the intense, intense hot sauce. I'm a big oh! hot sauce guy. Let's have some There's fun, boys. Pun there. Hey, what? What There's was the pun? I missed the pun. Intense. Oh, oh, he didn't even. He know you were. You know, you know you're doing that. Yeah. Oh, uh, my man, <laughs> my man. Oh man, that's cool. Oh, that's uh, epic. Right? I think that's that's. Uh, we get in the hot sauce. Intense game, hot sauce. Oh dude, my god, dude. You remember when you guys did the event last summer and uh, um, it didn't make one of the podcasts. I cut it out because uh, the podcast was too long. We did Brian, Brian Picard's podcast. Yeah, it was way too long. Right. Uh, so. Last summer we did an event with these guys, and you guys came down and you did. You went to the river for people tubing and like gave you know did the big barbecue at the end chuck of the river. Some dogs, yeah, yeah. chuck some dogs at them. Just throw them. Oh, we're just whipping <laughs> dogs at everyone <laughs> coming off the river. Uh, yeah. Oh yeah. yeah. Um. So then we had the barbecue at the house, and uh, afterwards everybody's eating and we're sitting there, and I'm sitting, there, I'm like, guys, do you like some hot sauce? They're like, fuck yeah, we're the hot, we're the sauce boys or sauce whatever, whatever you said. <laughs> and I go, all right, you like hot? Yeah, I like hot. So I went in the house and I got my like arm full of hot sauce, sauce. collection uh, yeah. and i like walked out and i was like okay this is yellow bird this is this this is this and i was like this is the one that is uh you gotta just you know just a little da- dab on anything and you guys are oh yeah wow well, i like hot sauce your eyes were like bleeding red <laughs> yeah <laughs> it's it's a fermented garlic Carolina Reaper sauce. It's on. Uh, I'm pretty sure that one was on Hot Ones, and it's like one of the hottest ones. It is absolutely called the Garlic Reaper. Yeah, keep that away from me. It is ridiculous. Yeah, <laughs> not, fun <times> <laughs> not fun times. But I, I like the idea of this collab, and I think like intense hot sauce. Babe. But so th- this is the yeah. So collabs, right? So that's the biggest yeah. that that the business. Small businesses, you see it all the time, breweries, collab, everything. So that is a kind of a new thing, whereas previously people would keep everything, they, white right. knuckles, right? Keep everything yep. to themselves. Uh, now it's kind of a different industry because by, do, excuse me, by doing these collabs, it's almost like when you're, say, on Instagram doing a live stream or something or sharing a post now where it's like two different brands sharing the yeah. same post. Yep. It, it's, it's sharing to different audiences. Like, I like hot sauce. I enjoy hot sauce. And it's an interest of mine. It's not directly related to what we do as a business, but you guys do a sauce company. We're both from Cape Breton Island. It would make sense. 
uh, I'm just c- continually trying to pitch this to you sort of thing <laughs> until stop uh, <laughs> throwing logic at me and cool ideas. I think like where you know a passion comes into something is like when you can take something that you know you're really enthusiastic about and that you know a lot about or you have a lot of experience about and then you can deliver that um to other people yeah and you know um and that's why like i will take this opportunity to say to you know your followers or your listeners you know come with us on an adventure yeah you know, come I'd up. Love to. Yeah, yeah. C- come yeah. up and run in the woods. All the shit you guys run do. in the woods with us, or jump in a canoe, or you won't die. I'll, I'll make sure. We'll that make sure you don't die. Oh, yeah. don't threaten me with a good time. I, I, I love that. <laughs> I love that stuff. Anyways, it's in my blood, man. I, I'm like literally jealous of all the shit you guys do. It sucks. I'm like, you know, just give me a show, boys. I'm not no eight day or nothing for me, but I mean, uh, <laughs> um, you psychopaths. But anyways, yeah, we'll take a day or two and go up the go up the river, right? I do want to touch on something Lee said though, um, and I, I think you would agree. Uh, and like, it's part of what I said before about like uh, being like kind of proud of the sauce company and, 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 and noticing what other sauce companies weren't doing. It's like they weren't uh, investing in our communities or, or even a part of our, mm-hmm. our communities. So like, one of the things I'm most proud of is that like we're hiring people yeah you know we're, we're donating to your your local charities your local functions we're like a part of the community we're hiring people we're a part of it we're, we're collabing with other other businesses we're like the we're just trying to be a part of something and and like the, the sauce companies that were out there like they were not doing any of that and you you touched on it before you were saying like you 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 have a, a, a staff yeah like you you're you're hiring you're investing in like the the island you're you're creating jobs like you're doing you're doing good here so it's like people will support that why why wouldn't they uh like bullseye barbecue sauce they never did a, a fucking thing for cape breton besides give us a half ass barbecue sauce you know what i'm saying <laughs> they, they, to be honest they all taste that's the same. right yeah. they're all brutal yeah, they anyway. all taste what? the same yeah. right so like i used to get it on panzerottis and stuff in high school and i hated it uh, yeah. yeah beaver foods goddamn <laughs> beaver foods and uh yeah <laughs> So like uh, and like I hope you're you're probably happy about like you know the jobs you've created within in your business. It's yeah, it's it's um it kind of nuts because you know three years ago I was running tubes by myself every morning. I was going up river with twenty tubes at seven a.m. hand pumping them up because I was an idiot and didn't order a electric pump. Uh, so I was hand pumping them up in a field. Um. And then coming back and checking people in and renting tents and then fixing up my house. And, you know, I was by myself and then I hired the first employee and then the next year it was like two or three. And then, you know, last year we had nine people and this year we're going to have like 11. And it's seasonal, but the goal for me is to build out the shoulder seasons, which is what I'm working on now so that we have like, you know, instead of a four month season, we can have like five or six month season. And then with the winter stuff, we can keep people on. And by doing these hikes and and trips and stuff, it's about hiring. Now I can hire. Like now I I do a lot of stuff myself because it's still like trying to expand the guided stuff side of things. But but essentially what the goal is, is to try to build a guiding industry out here um, within Cape Breton Island that maybe sort of was touched on years ago. But because... It was a little, maybe it was a little more difficult to get people, like attract people here. And now with like social media and everything else going on, it's easier to market and bring people here. Um, but then it helps us develop a uh, whole industry based around like guided stuff and to have guides that are versatile between being on the water, uh, being in the mountains, like all that sort of stuff. If we can do that, then we can build out a whole guiding industry and hire guides and pay decent rates, livable wage rates that then create a whole different industry and people move here. Like there's, there's a whole cascading effect that happens when you start doing stuff like that. So that's the kind of goal is to be able to like my goal, I would rather pay like a very good wage. Like every year we keep upping it like a dollar, $2 minimum, the base minimum wage keep going up because I want to pay a, a decent wage for people that want to stay here and live here. And we give preference obviously to people that are from Cape Breton, mm-hmm. Um, first, and then people that are like I've people come from Ontario this year. I've people come from BC this year. One person come from the UK, coming for the summer. Like you know, and then a bunch of local people that we've been employing for the last three years. Yeah, well, everything you just said there, like, Amen, brother. 
And uh, no, one more thing too is like a lot of your staff are y- are younger. Yeah. So like not only do you create like opportunities for employment, you know, cash money in their pocket, but they're doing a whole bunch of things. They're, they're learning skills that they're going to be able to apply later on in life and in, in whatever career field they choose. Like that's what you do. You you get entry level jobs. You're young. You're people are running around doing a whole bunch of things. People doing marketing for you. Like the, you're not only like supplying them with a you know job for money. You're supplying them with like an opportunity to learn a whole bunch of skills and, and really have a base that like, that's I think just as important as, uh, you know, going to like a, you know, an arts degree in, in, in university in some respects, if you, if, if you know what I mean. But anyways, I was going to say is like, you know, working for an entrepreneur is so much different than working for like, like Walmart a, or something, a corporation, yeah. Yeah. right. Um, or a chain or whatever. Um, because you really get to kind of see behind the scenes and sometimes do things. You get assigned tasks that are outside of your scope of work. Yeah. And so not only do you get to learn more things about your scope of work and have more opportunity in that respect, but you really get to learn how to run a business. Yeah, I agree. Know? And that's really great for it's young super, people. Oh, 100%. It's like, you know, that's really important for the next generation of Crazy hiking guys and <laughs> sauce. Dudes. Well, uh, people's like, I think that, I mean, Canary's one of them. Alec would probably be another one that's like, you know, at 5 a.m., 5.30 in the morning, there's text messages coming in. And it's like, this is the plan. This is what we're going to do. Yeah. It's like marketing plan at fucking 5 in the morning. What do you and think about like, this, Canary? What do you think about like, this? It's like, yeah, what? It's like, you know, and then... <laughs> it's it's co- awesome. So that's... The, my mind is like constantly running about ways that, you know, I'm thinking like five and six steps ahead. It's like, okay, well, you know, to create... What's the end goal? The end goal is to create a guiding industry in Cape Breton Island, right? So that's that's a goal. So how am I going to get there? Well, we got to do this, 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 and this, and this, and this. And this is how we're going to market this. And this is how we're going to do that. And this is how this is going to work. And... The next day, that'll change because I'll read more and I'll be like, oh, no, that's not going to work. Now, what do you think of this? What do you think of that? So that's kind of constantly working and trying to figure out different strategies and how to get to that end goal. And that end goal will always move because once you get there, you just have another end goal. 100%. And you know what's really cool too? Like, J- John, like, super proud of you. I love what, like, everything that you're doing in your life. And like, I'm glad, like, you hooked up with Lee, like, Lee, what Lee was doing. Uh, you guys cross paths and like John's mm-hmm. killing it now, man. And, uh, yeah, you came right? down to work on the wood sh- or the washing shed back building. Yeah, 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 yeah. And then we we're, you know, I was <clears throat> came down to do a bit of carpentry, and we we're sitting there. They're talking about the cross the highlands they did that winter. Man, that sounds so cool. You know, the snow. Sh- it was like what we did two weeks ago. Right. Essentially, they did. I was like, man, that sounds so cool. I wish I could do that. He's like, you can do that. I'm like, nah, bro, I can't do that. Let's go. <laughs> yes, you can. Yeah. So, yeah, and, that, that's really great. And now um, here you are, man. You're crushing it, John. I'm really happy hey, man. for you, man. Proud you know of you. what? Just got to, just got to, they, they say, uh, live a life that is worth saving. And uh, yeah. I think that's, you know, you just got to do the next right thing all the time, right? right. Push like yourself and grow. If you're not growing, you're rolling backwards, baby. Yeah, but you know what? Like, it's it's a lot easier when you have, like, people around you, like Lee, and, like, that kind of atmosphere, like, you know, mm-hmm. nature and outdoors. Yeah, and, and totally. hobby, something you're passionate about. Yep. Really makes the uh, the road a lot e- smoother and easier. Yeah. Uh, right. We, uh, um, I'm, re- I'm really grateful for my friends because we have... Uh, such uh it's such a unique combination everybody's got their their skills but everybody's like just kind of a little bit crazy and like willing to like push the boundaries and raise the bar a little bit every time crazy. we every time we go out to do something right They're like just push what it if, a little further do a yeah. little something a little different what if we, what if we just do it this what way? if we only drank barbecue sauce <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> no water oh our only caloric intake is barbecue sauce right hey yeah just think about it push it boys that's it but hey uh that was so fun when we were like uh whipping people with burgers and hot dogs down uh, at, at the, the river and i didn't see it so. no well, but you know what like that's like back to what i said like 
that's what people like us do. Like, like I said, back to the yeah. bull, bullseye ain't doing shit here. You know what I mean? Like, yeah, we didn't char- like that was just something cool to do for the people. You know, like that's and like shit like, that you do. And it's just I'm really proud. I, I have a lot of other friends. I'm friends with the Brenton Brewery guys. I know you, you yeah. did some stuff with them. Yeah, they do a lot of good stuff. Just really like mm-hmm. really happy like that. I'm just seeing other people like stuff in Cape Breton growing and you're showcasing it because like Cape Breton's a beautiful, beautiful place. Right. Uh, the people here are amazing, but yeah. like just the beauty of like, it's like honest to God, like it's, you know, February, not so much, but in June, July, like August, September with the golf courses and, and, and the trails yeah. and stuff like it's literally one of the nicest places on earth yeah. on the planet. It's uh, there's a there's a really special thing we have here too is like all of the surrounding communities all have their own little things going on all the time in the you know in the tourist season yeah so for somebody who comes from outside of here you can literally go anywhere on this island and find a raft of things to do that you would never see anywhere else. Yeah. Or like just even even an hour, hour down the road, or you might not even find any of those things published online or you may never hear other word, word of mouth for this concert or this, you know, I think that sort of stuff's really special. Cause like if I travel to Thailand or Costa Rica or whatever, like the coolest shit I did in those places in anywhere I traveled, I found out from somebody. Yeah. I didn't read it on a poster. Let me you tell know? you a story about, like to just highlight what you just said. Yeah. When we were younger, we were like, you know, fishing mackerel a lot. We were like going out and skipping school or whatever. Or just, we you were on didn't. The, we were on the big <laughs> mackerel hunts. Oh, yeah. Uh, um, so anyways, we went. We had this spot. It was like this old, in Gabarus, it was like an old fishing wharf that was washed out. Yeah. So like, it was pretty sketchy getting out there. Like you had to come in before like the tide or whatever or changed. So we we drove up there one day, and there was a couple older fellows out there. There's a couple people out in our spot. We were like, "Shit! Like, what are we gonna do?" And we're like, "Let's drive into Gabarus. Let's find like two really old guys and ask them where the secret spot is." So like, we drove around like a r- very rural like town, Gabarus, and yeah. then went to this little old dock, and there was a couple old timers there, and we went, "Hey, like." boys like where's the spot where's the secret where's all the fish at boys because we knew those guys yeah. were weathered right they knew where the spot was and they said <laughs> listen drive to the absolute end of the road you can't drive anymore park on the beach or park right next to the beach walk the whole, entire length of the beach and you'll see some rocks a whole hill of rocks and there'll be like a little some trees on top of the rocks walk up through the trees and you'll come out to a landing that's the spot so we we, we did that and as we came out on the spot like walked up the rocks through the trees it was like Christopher Columbus. It was like whatever they all the mackerel were flapping on the water. We were like, Boys, <laughs> fish on! It was like the commercial. It was like we could feed people for a thousand years. We're like, no way! We were just pulling fish in like five, ten, five, ten, fifteen at a time. Like it was nuts. And the uh, uh, yeah, it was the, one of the best days of my life. <laughs> But like you said, we found out from the yeah. like the low, you know what I mean, the local. You right. can't find like it was it was uh yeah uh, what a, yeah that was that was a good time. But he was spot on. Was, was that ever the spot that oh, oh, <laughs> the fish boys? <laughs> right. <laughs> Anyways, oh that's amazing. Yeah, definitely not like when we went up the Highlands fishing trout, and the guy told us to fish off the dam, the Shetty Camp Lake, and it's like the dead spot. It's like the spot where nobody goes. And then another guy came along. And he goes. Did they tell you to fish here? Yeah. He goes, oh, man, he was telling you to fish in the wrong spot. You got to go over here. <laughs> well, that's the flip side. He, he wanted to keep his spots to himself, that guy. Yeah, right? Uh, yeah. 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 But uh, so you have a restaurant. Yeah, we have a little take of food shop. So uh, I wanted to a little tack on a little something to your guys' last podcast. So you guys were doing like the best places, the summer adventures in uh, in Cape Yeah, Red. we kind of winged yeah. that one. There was a couple. I listened to it. I was like, ah, oh, I should have said this. Should have said that. Hope my aunt doesn't listen to this one because uh, I should have said her spot. But anyways, right. continue. Sorry. Oh no, it's all good. Like, and you guys pretty much stuck to like the trail, like the, yeah, in yeah. terms of uh, your kind of recommendations, which I, I fully endorse. Mm-hmm. But I, I would also add, like, maybe just take a trip into the city, the big city of Sydney. Yep. Right. And, um, you know, there's obviously like the fortress if you're into the, like the nostalgic kind of things. But there's lots of great little trails and parks, the Myra, mm-hmm. uh, that surround uh, the city of Sydney. And, uh, and then there's the Island Sauce Company Snack Shack, which is like the pretty much the, the most delicious takeout food shop you'll ever have. Probably, you know, outside of like Italy or, or, <laughs> or, or you know. <laughs> 
<laughs> like that, right? I love uh, that. Like the sexiest poutines that you can find. They right? are. Right? They so, are incredible. Yeah. So tell us about those a little bit. Just, just, just describe it as you were. It, it, as maybe describe it like you're a two a.m. infomercial for a sex hotline. <laughs> maybe not. Okay, well, just describe it. Uh, I'll do my. I'll do my best, Lee. Uh, <laughs> this is Cleo. Yeah, yeah. I will tell your fortune. Uh, you guys remember that? <laughs> okay, just, skip. <laughs> just tell us about your. Routine. So, anyways, uh, the poutines are sexy, uh, and uh, it, it all starts with the perfect blanching process. For those of you that don't know what a blanching process is, it's the process to cook the crispiest, most tender, golden homemade French fry. Mm-hmm. Uh, so we we have a perfect blanching process. We use uh, real cheese curds, none of that uh, shredded matzah, uh, which is uh, blasphemy. That's it's what they true. do. That's it what they do. Blasphemy. blasphemy. I mean, I do love a really uh, shitty. Oh, hey, food. listen. Any, it's she, got its she, place. Listen, you could take a dump on some fries and throw some gravy on it, and I'm, you know, it's probably won't be that bad, right? <laughs> um, but the proper way to do it is is have a perfectly blanched fr- homemade French fry. That's right. Real cheese curds. Uh, our gravy is, is otherwise known as liquid gold. That's right. Right. It's made with love. Every poutine we put out, we care about. It's like we're serving our, our child, our child to the customer. That's how much we care about it, right? That's right. And then we dolly it up with us, you know, some fried chicken, maybe I, some ranch. I've eaten a few a of your pulp. babies. Oh, uh, <laughs> that's gross. That's not. <laughs> oh my baby god, that's poutine. so bad. They, hey, come they, on, they you are can, next level. You can take right? that in many ways. Yeah. So, um, and it's like we haven't really got too much into it. We're going to kind of get more and more into it now as we progress through our. Our, you know, our business and, and growth like we do some pulled pork and stuff that are like kind of a little bit more barbecue style a little bit of mm-hmm. uh cape bread and taco it's mostly uh it's pretty old school right like cheeseburger right. fries fish and chips chicken clams fingers. chicken fingers so we just go special yeah exactly yeah so we, we we step it up another level we we got a couple of really crazy poutines a whole a whole line of pulled pork sandwiches yeah you know we uh give the people what they want boys and uh that's right yeah we'll be getting the crowd going all summer fellas so <laughs> <laughs> oh, Kevin, you're one of a kind, yeah. bro. I'm oh, having and, a great time. And here. boy, yeah, it's, this is a great yeah. time, though, boys. Yeah. I'm glad we did this. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And Lee, like, teased me up for the cheesy faux cheesy seasoning without even knowing, right? So, like, right? That, oh, yeah, that's yeah. Gonna, like, man. Psychic. Oh, psychic abilities. Right? Are you guys going to do any events this year? Yes, sir. Yep. We're working on <sighs> one. Going to get some dates. Two. Yeah, dates. I actually had two calls this week um, asking specifically what when events were happening this summer because they're going to plan a trip to Cape Breton. I was like, oh, fuck. I mean, it's only two, but it, like even at that, I was like, oh, no shit. People are actually looking at it. So the well, only thing I have is our season opener on the July 1st. Yeah. So that's it. Everything else is I'm still talking dates. Um, so like I said in an email the other day, I was like, it just pick a weekend and then uh, we'll rock and roll with that. But uh, yeah, we're going to we're going to do it. Actually, I'm, I've been working on that. So like a couple of my buddies are musicians. I, I really wanted to get them out there. So they're checking their schedule, see if they can make a weekend happen. And um, I got the, the wife to, to let me know when I'm going to be a dad. Yeah. When I'm going <laughs> to uh, like, she has a family reunion a certain weekend. So we'll, we'll hit some dates. I'd like to do a double header, like a, like a Friday, Saturday. Yeah. Oh, we can definitely do that. Header. Cause that's um, what we're doing for, yeah. um, Garrett Mason. Yeah, Garrett Mason on the Kennedy yeah. weekend, which isn't announced yet, and you know. Oh, and then when we were out there, I have to give like a shout. Like, there's like, all about the camp and the tenting and stuff. Like, like me and Lisa stayed at your place yeah. later on in the summer just as, as campers. But when we went up there for um the doing the 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 concert and, and food, we stayed at the Riverview Inn. Yep. Yeah. Boys, they got a games room. It's old. It's we old. Were by the sto- way, so. Oh yeah. <laughs> yeah. They better not get rid of that games room. We were there. We were staying there. Uh, pool, foosball, and ping pong. Me, Nate, and Logan were up like four in the morning. Right? <laughs> yeah, just like, yeah, that was pretty dope, man. Was, you cab yeah. it by that? I'm not sure. Oh, I, that's not a yeah. Okay, yeah. <laughs> just bleep I, that. I, 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 I was thinking I was gonna, I was going to say that, and then you're, and then I was like, no, I'm not going to even get that. But you know, no, nah, it's well, who cares? Whatever. Whatever. Yeah. I don't know. You can probably anybody listening just log on to uh, propertyonline.ns or NS Property Online, whatever it is called, and uh, you can find out. It hasn't changed ownership yet, so that's why I'm saying. I yeah. heard, I heard that you did. Yes. So because Lee hasn't written the check yet, I guess uh, 
we're gonna we're we're looking at uh, i'm working now on plans for the property that i'm at right now so then we bought the property next door um that i was supposed to people that camp there i was always i was talking about doing group campsites and stuff similar to kedgy and and that's the plan um there was just a lot of big purchases in the last year the property and everything else so yeah this year we're just you know just getting things going going to fine-tune everything further and then uh always building man that's the that's what i said like it's like you find an end goal well even with us it wasn't really a goal but it's like you get to a certain point and i you know realistically we could just stay stay what we are improve a little bit and then that's it right a lot of people would do it. it's like happy with how things are operating um but I'm not. I'm. I'm not like. I'm not wired like. Never that. be like that. I'm just like. Yeah. Okay. How can we keep going? And what? What's the next plan? And how can we improve everything for the actual user experience? Like that's how my mind works. It. It looks at like what the user experience is, even on our website. Like how can we improve the, the user experience of being on our website, making a booking, to be in there, to the experience itself, to afterwards everything so that's kind of how my brain works so it's like you know i understand that there's things that need to be improved on and so we will eventually get there but you know it's all all uh all learning thing and with that being said like i think it's not you'll have this no matter what i'm pretty sure um there's that like personable like touch on that side of things that like you can't replicate right so as much as you can improve all like the like the the stuff you're talking about you guys are still going to have like a real personable you know, touch with your business, with the, your employees that like, you just can't replicate in a lot of other, other settings. Right. Which is yeah. really, really cool. I, I will, I want to say one more thing before I forget, like, it's kind of what like we, I want to project for Island sauce company. I think I have to do a better job of doing that, but it's like the branding of, of and like how you project like the, the, your business as a whole. It's a really like, it's like a lifestyle. It's like a way of uh, like living uh, in, in a way. And it's kind of like how I want to project Island sauce company in, in, in some respect, because like food is meant to be, you know, shared with friends and with people outdoors, and uh, and like I, I feel like what you project with your media uh, to uh, you know customers or to people uh, really like reflects well on your business and is and is is not uh, what's it called like false advertising. It's you yeah. do a really good job with that stuff, and and that's I'm, I'm hopeful like to we, we can do a better job because with our our product and our business we want to you know. Um, incorporates that like that lifestyle of uh uh not so much um you know uh, i wouldn't replace your water with with barbecue sauce uh, all right uh, <laughs> I, I was, so you know. i'm not gonna but, fill but you know what maybe but. maybe this summer when we take a crew up the river we'll cook some fi- we'll cook some burgers on an open fire and we'll you we'll make sure the sauce is in the shot oh yeah i think that would right you know be, be pretty proper thing i think boys right yeah. yeah and you get to share that with our friends and yeah. Um. You got any? Uh. You got any secrets you can let us in on? Anything happening this season that you you know? Well. Uh. Yeah. So uh, Lee already busted one wide open with the new product here. <laughs> yeah. Zen Master over there. Yeah. Um. So yeah. And other than that, like we're gonna be doing a like Sydney Rib Fest. So the the biggest thing in, in with your business too, Lee, uh, you'll be doing stuff as well. Is that things are wide open now? Yeah. Uh. Like the COVID stuff is 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 kind of fully going away. It looks like. So like. Like the, we're gonna be the travel and saw show in a lot of ways, so we'll be able to go to events and and pack the van and go to different places, different communities throughout Cape Breton. Uh, one thing that we we'll be doing is uh, going to the Rip Fest in Sydney. Exciting, and yeah, and I think we're what we're gonna do is um do like a limited edition sauce for Rip Fest. So yeah. it'll be like the Island Sauce Go Rip Fest sauce, and uh, the Rip Fest is put on by uh, the Rot- uh, the Rotary, which yeah. I'm a member of. So like I'll do a custom sauce for uh rib fest and like a dollar from every bottle will go to charity cool. um so yeah just just basically doing things like the rib fest the uh live life intense hot sauce uh live oh, uh, the, the intense hot sauce uh, there, there's, uh, there, you gotta work on that one but right. there, it's there yeah so, but yeah just just the, the the fact that we can get on the road and get going that's exciting slap some sauce in people's faces throw some dogs in yeah, people's mouths yeah so we didn't, uh, we haven't done a, a proper rapid fire in a few episodes. It is true. That is true. Okay. But are you ready for a rapid fire? Sure. Ready, ready as I'll ever be. Cake or pie? Cake. Ice cream cake. <laughs> 
Ice cream. Oh, oh from where though? Uh, oh, I don't know. Dairy Queen, I guess. Is there any other? Is there, uh, is there any other place? Yeah, but Dairy Queen is it the cake or log? Cake. Ah, you fuck. Okay, so just uh, <laughs> while we're on the topic of ice cream, yeah. okay, you know you like a you like a good food hack. Sure. Okay, plain poutine. Right. Right. So like no pulled pork. Right. No yeah, yeah. Whatever. Standard. Just like standard three ingredient poutine. Right. Scoop of ice cream on top. Okay. Yeah. Cold, sweet, salty, hot. Like all the things all are the, in there that complement each other. I think you'll like it. Uh, yeah. you'll mm. f- follow Alan Sosko on Instagram for poutine ice cream combinations. <laughs> uh, favorite movie? Coach Carter. Coach Carter. Basketball guy. Big basketball guy. I f- yeah. I uh, thought you were going to go with, uh, you know. It was on the spot. I, I probably, you know. But yeah, in Star Wars. Maybe Space Jam. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> oh, yeah. The original. <laughs> yeah. Uh, favorite animal? Uh, dog, I guess, you know. Yeah. I, I got a dog. And, yeah. You got a cat, too. Yeah, the cats, but yeah, they're little pricks. <laughs> <laughs> uh, favorite cut of meat? Uh, I love me a tomahawk, baby. Yeah, man, yeah, eh? yeah. I'm gonna bring one up this summer. We we, we bring the whole rib in, and uh, yeah. Nate, Nate butchers it up. We get we, so I'll bring. I'm gonna bring up a tomahawk. Cool. Nice. Last time yeah. I had one of those was at Cabot Panorama. Yeah, whatever. Yeah. Uh, my favorite's whatever Nate's Nate cuts up, baby. My Sauna boy, or hot tub? Oh, hot tub. Yeah. Uh, yeah. I love Gross. me a sauna, but like, goddamn, you can sit like the hot tub, right? You know, burgers or dogs. Burger. Right? Right. Yeah. All right. Now, do you know what fuck, Mary kill is? Is that the, is that the, the grunge band you started back in, <laughs> in, in junior high school? I don't, so, no, no. So, so who are you going to fuck? Who are you going to marry? Who are you going to kill? Right? Um, Garlic, onion, hot pepper. Garlic, onion, hot pepper. I'm going to marry shit. Garlic. You're going to marry garlic. I would too. Yeah, that, I'm a big onion guy though. I would rub, 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 rub onions all over myself and <laughs> like, you know, like right? Uh, and like I don't discriminate red, white, yellow, like there's Whatever. no discrimination on the onions. I like I but garlic, come on. So, so I'm you're marry- probably you're probably fucking an onion. Uh, no, I'm going to mm-hmm. fuck man. the hot pepper and yeah. just deal with the consequences later. Yeah. You know. Uh, so who to- are you going to kill? Uh, Ooh, oh no! I'm gonna kill. Oh, sorry, oh, I'm killing the hot, kill the hot pepper. I'm, and I'm, fucking, the I'm onion. fucking the onion. That's it. All I right. feel that. Right. And it doesn't matter what color onion, what size. You know, you just like I'll do whatever onion. <laughs> You're an equal <laughs> opportunity yeah, yeah, onion yeah, fucker. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh shit! Please. All right. So, uh, is there anything else we miss? Anything else you want to tell the listeners? Uh, no, I think this is this is fun, boys. I'm glad we did this, and I'm looking forward to the summer and uh, having some good times with the boys. How uh, can everybody find you? So, uh, yeah, Instagram at Island Sasco, Facebook the Island Sauce. Hit us up on YouTube. Check out the website. Um, and for uh, people who follow me who are listening to this podcast, gotta check out Live Life Intense. Uh, their YouTube channel. Hey, Lee, plug yourself for people that are coming in from on, on the Island Sauce. So, just listen, live life intensely. Listen to it right now. <laughs> but uh, in the podcast, uh, what was it? Is it living life intently? Is That's it. it. Yeah. yeah, yeah. So um, uh, probably yeah. I was thinking about that today. It probably should be a different name because it, living life it sounds like a like self help like <laughs> ep- podcast. Which was I mean, it was like the idea was just a play on whatever. The it brand is good. Hey, though. listen, it's good. It works. Ke- you know what I mean? Kevin might have inspired somebody yeah. to really change their life here today. Yeah, because the, all this sauce talk got me feeling a little hungry. Oh, hey, and it's feeling me. I'll get I'll get a little right. motivated. That's, that's, here. Yeah, that's what I'm talking about, boys. <laughs> you can always change the podcast to eat barbecue sauce intense if you want. Like, you know, that's I'm not going to hate you if you do it. But um, right. Yeah, I just uh, to, to like follow live life intense. Check out everything they do. Uh, I'm really proud and happy what you guys are doing. Showcasing our beautiful island and uh, getting the crowd going, helping out uh, the communities. Well, now I'm excited to see your media this summer. So. Oh, we're lighting up the media, so make sure yeah. you follow us and keep we're, like we're 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 maybe at, lighting may, it up this summer. Maybe oh. after your events, we'll do a little dance party. <clears throat> so I want to yeah. see. I want to see. Uh, you should do like a shower, like like you know the Axe body spray ads. Yeah, yeah, like the Island Sauce Company ads, but the, <laughs> I, I take on Axe body spray. Yeah. So you're like 
underneath the armpits and then you're going out to the club and then you attract whoever i i love it like, <laughs> you know what i mean like, you, you know, know what I mean? the marketing team you're, stay you're, tuned we're, for we're, that no folks. we're on the same page there like it's good in your cereal it's good in your coffee i i actually for like we have a nice little uh garden out front there so i like i don't I, we um use love rub we just sprinkle a little love rub on our on our garden out front every day <laughs> flowers bloom they look delightful right and they're tasty uh, now I, too you know uh, what you know what i think you should do like a, a spoof just a, that your ads are basically a spoof on classic ad campaigns like um, you just replace it with like, the, yeah, yeah 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 like 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 ego like the uh, like what's the what's the Lego my ego Lego my ego yeah. when it was like oh oh or wh- what's his name uh, Kevin Tony the Tiger no the McCain fries oh yeah 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 yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. like all the classic ads that we had growing up just yeah. like do spoofs off of them that is the campaign it's like a spoof ad campaign it's a that, great beca- idea because. You know, because people have nostalgia, so people like us and your probably de- target demographic are going to relate to it because they've watched it growing up. One hundred percent. Well, Kevin, like thanks it. for coming in, man. Boys, this is. Uh... Oh well, I guess who, again we are. You guys are we you. <laughs> <laughs> but thanks for coming on. Yeah, this is great, boys. Uh, we'll do it again sometime soon. Rock awesome. and roll, baby. Cheers. Hey. Peace. Yep. Oh, I forgot to hit record. No, I'm just joking. <laughs> <laughs>